So the concept of typography can be incredibly difficult to understand. The cool part is there's absolutely techniques to help understand it and just get a little more comfortable with it. So if you're like one of the many beginners, including myself as a beginner at one point, where maybe you kind of just leave typography to like the last part. Either way, you're probably gonna leave this video a lot more happier and just kind of like understanding typography, especially everything pack. Don't forget to check out the everything pack. It's the first link in all my video descriptions because it's basically the product that you get once and then you get lifetime, literally years and years forever of products that I designed that are custom made so that only people who have them are only people who purchase them. So with that being said, you can buy it once and then for the rest of your life, you get those nice cool little emails, join the Discord community, all that good stuff. And yeah, it's just, just a self plug. But let's get into it. So the first trick is pretty common, but it's always to make sure that you're looking for similar compositions to what you're actually designing for. Now, I do know it's a very obvious tip and you're probably just like, okay, really? Like I said before, a lot of beginners often kind of use or leave typography to the very last and maybe even have the idea that it actually doesn't matter. Typography is absolutely essential and even probably the most important part of design communication. Now, if you're just wondering where to look for inspiration, Pinterest is a great extension to look at. Some people don't really know how to actually navigate it, but when you find a project that you like, be sure to look at the projects below it to see similar concepts. This can share how to design the project with multiple sources that look just like yours of similar inspiration that inspires you the first time. Nine times out of 10 for me, I can definitely find a project or a concept that aligns with my concept that I can use for my problems. But maybe you just want to understand a few techniques to actually understand your type layouts. First step in all of this is choosing the right typeface. Also just for the record, typeface is just like a fancy word for font. Like typeface is like a collection, usually a font like weights, like that's a typeface. A font is like a singular thing, you feel me? However, those fancy terms when you're actually using and looking for fonts like sans serif or serif, display fonts, mono fonts, or even like decorative fonts. Yeah, those words are just not for show. Typically fonts like a sans serif font acts as a heading font or even a primary font in your project. And what I mean by that is it's the, the big word that's usually on the top or whatever, that's just like the word you wanna see. While something like a mono typeface will be the secondary or like the tertiary font in your project. So what happens is when you stack these two together, you're reading the fonts hierarchy a lot clearer because typically sans serif fonts, depending on the weight that you choose, are a lot more bold, while the mono typefaces may not be, and they can actually hold a bit less important information, but still be read. Like if you try a combination of typefaces, let's say like a bold typeface and a decorative type, these two typefaces just end up clashing. They make it hard for the reader to gather the information quickly because the overall preference of the typeface would usually be used as a primary heading font. So if you were to actually take a look at your project and you kind of see two fonts that you're using and they can both be used as your heading font, then maybe your issue of the composition isn't your type form, but it's actually the choice that you made from the very start. Additionally though, heading fonts have a few variables when addressing these things. Some maybe have a standard height or a weight, something for maybe websites so like Arial for like instance. Then some fonts can also be compressed like drama where the characters have a very thin width. So although it's a similar amount of characters as the Arial font, it appears to be more bigger on the canvas because you can actually increase the size and command more space. And then lastly, you can also have like stretch fonts, something like Taruna where a similar amount of characters are just way more wide so they just require smaller sizes when using them. And in an instance where you have a heading word that you wanna be seen, and you also have other supporting information you wanna put on the canvas as well, you run into hierarchy issues in an overall mess because the sizes of the fonts don't have a distinctive difference. And I promise you, just like this information alone will pretty much solve 80% of your issues when like addressing typography. That's why, another self plug alert. It might be beneficial for you to join my newsletter or even just follow me on Twitter so you can get some really cool fonts because I search for them weekly so that you don't have to. So you can either follow my Twitter down below or also my newsletter. They both are just fantastic, just saying. But besides the choices of fonts, you also have the right to break words down. So what I actually mean by that is you can do things like stacking. Let's say you have a word like match day, where typically it can be read on one line. You can place match on top and then day on the bottom. This of course usually looks good because then you can put your subtext right below it and then you get this really cool cinematic feeling with the actual overall composition. But besides stacking, you also have framing where you can actually use a shape like a rectangle or a square to house just a bit of random information around. 
So maybe it's like a date or maybe you're just echoing some information that's an actual social copy. As long as you fit it inside of that rectangle or square, then maybe the overall typography around it or the overall composition around it doesn't look so messy because it's contained in this little box. And then besides that, there's also something called overlapping where let's say you have like a heading word that only has like a few characters in it, where actually obstructing it wouldn't do much damage to the overall like legibility of it. You can take the secondary font and then layer it on top of the heading font. And of course, it's gonna be a few words or even stacked couple of words that I personally like to call type texture. But overall, the majority of the information that you're putting on top of this actual heading font may be actually useful, but realistically, it's never supposed to be red, or at least it doesn't really matter. So it's kind of like, you know, a grain texture, but besides it being like a graphical texture, it's just type texture. So now that you have all this information, right? What, what do you actually do with it? Now, I wish there's like some magic example that I would give you that would work for every single instance ever. Uh, maybe that thing about it, it's kind of, maybe it's like stacking. But the truth is there's, there's real never, like there's not an answer for that. You'll kind of find your own reasons and use cases through just like your journey in design itself, where of course you explore, but also you can also be inspired as well on when and where you would use certain techniques. But the one thing I absolutely want you to walk away from this video is make sure you understand that type, it is important, right? It's so important I just hit the mic, but I'm being so serious. It's incredibly important. Stop leaving it to last. When you're moving around those photos of your composition and like you you got the, the pretty pictures, you're stacking your sports poster, your color corrections in there. And then last but not least, after everything is done, you just add your type and call it a day. No. And also, if you still think you need some kind of like layer style to like make a like a words like type work. Also, no, you generally do not need any kind of layer styles or some like text effect to have a successful graphic because realistically, the most important part of that scenario is that the right font was chosen, not the effects that you put on it, but also understanding the actual fonts themselves and what it means to be a heading font, a decorative font, display font, all that good stuff. Because when it comes to like labeling and downloading fonts, they usually say it on the behance somewhere or even like a font space or, or defont. They all say, what they're meant to be used for because the person that designed it more or less probably understands design and when to use their typeface. But yeah, with that being said, since some HQ out, don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking productive guys. Let much love, peace. Join the Everything Pack members, do that whole thing. Join the Everything Pack, join the newsletter, yada, yada, yada. And I'll see you later, peace.